Hi folks, my name is Keith Pennings and I'm the director of the School Spirit Band program. And I am sending out this, um, this video just to share with you a little bit about what it takes to play each instrument and what you might consider when choosing an instrument. Of course, um, our Try It Nights are, are going to be the best um, way to find if your child is um, a natural on a certain instrument or has a struggle with a certain instrument because of the weight or the size of their fingers, things like that. Um, so let's get into each instrument. The flute. We, uh, we start with a head joint, which has a hole and it has a hole here and the sound, the airflow travels through the rest of the instrument. Um, the rest of the instrument has keys. The more keys you put down, the lower the note goes. And the less keys that you press, the higher the sound. We always test um, kids just by the head joint, okay? And what happens is there has to be a very small airflow coming from the mouth. We call it the embouchure. And I'm gonna show you here. You have to anchor the two sides of the mouth and then just a little little airflow come out through the middle. It's like this. You can see there's a little separation here. I'm not even trying to make a hole and it's more like a, a bubble um, that the air just naturally makes in the mouth. It's like this. I'm anchoring here and that airflow needs to flow over the hole so that half of the air goes into the hole, half the air goes over the hole. And here's what it sounds like. And here's how we find the position too. Um, we match the hole up on our lip. So the hole is half on the top lip, half on the bottom lip. And then we roll it down a quarter of a turn and that's the proper position. We cover this end and we blow. If you have a large area for the hole, the embouchure, it's gonna be very airy. It's gonna sound like this. And that's how some kids start off. This embouchure is something that will get better and better and better and better as children grow. Um, I can't think of anything else right now, but the second sound, which is the harder sound, the more realistic sound of the, of the instrument, is that we take away the hand and the air is now free to flow. It ha the airflow has to be a bit more forced and pointed. So, so let's ch check out that. If you don't have enough air pushed, you will get this. Takes a lot more air to get the sound. You might have the right position where the air is cutting up over the top of the hole and half the air is going into the hole, but it takes a, a bit more air. Um, so that is our test for if your child can make the sound on the flute again. Airy sound. And the best sound. So that's the things that we uh, I don't say test for, but, but we want to let your child know that they either have a natural ability to do it or they're going to need to work on it. Okay. So that's the flute. The second instrument I'm going to demonstrate is the clarinet. The clarinet is made up of, you know, big tube with lots of open holes. These holes are open and the pads of the fingers need to cover the holes in order to make the sound. The more fingers down, the lower the sound goes. The less fingers down, 
the sound goes up. Little children that have little fingers might have struggles holding the air in. If they are letting air out in any way, you will not get a sound. So that is something con to consider. If your child is in third grade but only eight years old and they have small fingers, it's going to be a struggle. The instrument is played with a reed and a mouthpiece and you're basically putting your mouth around the mouthpiece, we call it the embouchure, and you're going to blow and it's pretty much going to make a sound. Um, here's what I do. So if you open your mouth, the lip covers the bottom teeth and you put about half an inch of the clarinet on that what I call pad, pillow, okay? And then you put your teeth on top and then you're gonna tighten up all the way around. This is a, um, this pushes back a lot, so you're gonna notice that um, um, there's a lot of pressure. Some kids have a um, some kids have a little difficult time getting enough pressure to make the sound. Um, let's see. And the nice thing about the instrument at first, if we are playing with no fingers, and then we add the thumb, which is the back hole. Okay, and then we add the first finger. That's going to be a second note down. Third note down will be the next finger. And the fourth note down will be that finger. Um, that gives us five notes. Da, 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 da. And in the first semester, that's all we use. We only use the left hand. So that's a really nice, this is a really nice instrument because of that simple progression and kids usually get it quite quite easily. So I'm going to just show up and down. And all I did was lift my fingers up and put them down. If you take too much mouthpiece, you might get a squeak, okay? And that sounds like this. Okay? Not a good thing. <laughs> you will get a squeak if you take a lot of mouthpiece. You will get a note if you get just the right amount. amount, And you will clamp off the air and, and not be able to get the air through if you take too little. So, if I take too little, if I take the right amount, if I take too much, so kids can figure out, okay, and they, that's what they usually learn in the first five or six weeks. <laughs> okay, so that's the clarinet. All right, the next instrument is the alto saxophone, and much like the clarinet, it uses a reed and a mouthpiece and it's a different size mouthpiece and a different size reed. Um, the instrument is made of all metal. It uses a strap. If you get a good strap it comes with this nice pad on the back and um, now it hangs so the, the weight is um, on the neck. If you have a very small child, I wouldn't recommend this, you know, um, and so they should be hefty enough to hold the instrument. Um, they have pet, um, they have um, keys here that if you press them, you know, sound will go lower. Less um, keys, the sound goes higher. Um, much like the clarinet, pillow, teeth, tighten up and blow. So I'm going to just play a few notes on this.
similar embouchure, sounds different. Um, the saxophone, because it's all metal, it's going to be, um, it's going to rent for twice as much as most instruments. Um, anyway, all the other ones I think are renting for about $30 a month or so. This one will rent for about 50. Anyway, it's, uh, it's hefty, but it still has the uh, embouchure of the clarinet. You can always go for from the clarinet to the saxophone and you, you have a lot of similarity there. So I would suggest um, clarinet is always a good one to start off with. But if you have somebody that's really in love with the saxophone, you know, they love the sound and they can handle the weight and they want to go for it, go for it. Okay. And we'll get on to our last instrument, the trumpet. Okay, the trumpet. Um, the trumpet is played differently than the previous instruments, which are called woodwinds. This is a brass instrument. What you have to do is you have to buzz your lips. And that happens inside this cup mouthpiece. The looser the buzz versus the tight buzz. <clears throat> That's going to determine your pitch. There's uh, so if you buzz loose, if you buzz medium, if you buzz tight. You're pressing your lips together. You're pushing more air. Um, so you're to get a loose sound. You're um, not pressing your lips together as much, letting it buzz. And um, I would say your lips are rolled out a little bit. And as you get a tighter embouchure and maybe you're rolling the instrument uh, the the lips in and you're pushing more air you're getting a higher buzz and the tightest buzz you know. so those three examples are like this so trumpet um, as you press down the keys, you, you know, different combination of the keys will give you different notes. So going from, we're going to go down from down five notes. So that's the trumpet. I hope this video helped you. Um, our, again, our um, Try It Nights are going to be in a couple weeks on the, there's three of them, one for each different school that we're advertising the program to. The first one's going to be on Tuesday the 27th for Blue Hills Elementary. That's going to be at Azul Park on Golita. It's directly behind Blue Hills Elementary. All of these uh, band nights are starting at 6.30, going till 7.45 where we can explain the program and let the kids try out all the instruments. Um, so the first one is on the 27th for Blue Hills. Um, although if you need to make some arrangement and go to a try at night, that's not um, necessarily for your school, you're welcome to join us. The second try at night is gonna be Wednesday the 28th at 6.30 p.m. at Grant Park in Los Altos. And that's for Montclair Elementary. The third um, try at night is going to be on Thursday, um, September 29th at 6.30 p.m. at Ortega Park. And that's going to be for Stockelmeyer um, parents and students. Okay, um, Parents and students should show up and take advantage of trying all these instruments and learning about the program and asking questions. Um, so that's it. Okay, on the screen you can see all three of the try at nights where they are located, and what school they are intended for. 
please share this video with other people. We will need a minimum of 20 students in order to open a class at any school. And if we get an overload of students, um, we will be able to open a second class if we get at least 15 students. So if we fill up our first class on Tuesdays um, with 30 students and we get 15 extra students, we can open up a second class. Anyway, I hope this um, gave you a lot of information to think about. And if you have any questions, please feel free to um, respond to this email or give me a call at my cell number, which is 408-624-6196. Okay.